Every spring, I look forward to seeing warblers, small, oftentimes colorful, quite vocal, insectivorous birds in the family Perulidae. These little spring birds leave their warm wintering grounds south of the border in Central and South America and migrate up to the northern parts of the country for the summer where they breed. Due to their small size, they can be difficult to see, especially when hidden in thick foliage, but the brightly colored plumage of many makes it a treat when you do spot one. And for the warblers that aren't colorful, their loud, attention-grabbing song makes it a delight for birders to hear. In North America, there are over 50 species, so there are many to see. I've been getting to see a few this spring, which has been a delight. Some of these characters are pretty fascinating, and I thought it would be nice to share some interesting information I found about them. Enjoy. Easy to recognize and spot, the black and white warbler makes for a great bird for beginner birders. One of the earliest arriving migrant warblers, you can find them in their preferred habitat of choice, deciduous or mixed forests. Males are heavily streaked black and white. Females are paler in color, have a whiter throat and grayish ear patch. These warblers don't typically forage among leaves as most warblers do. Instead, they hunt for insects down low on the limbs and trunks of trees, climbing about in a similar fashion to the way creepers and nuthatches do. Because of this, it was once known as the black and white creeper. The call of this striking little bird is a thin, high-pitched, wheezy, 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 like a squeaky wheelbarrow. The oldest black and white warbler was a female banded in North Carolina in 1957. She lived to be at least 11 years and 3 months old. The next warbler is one you'll find walking on the forest floor, holding its short tail cocked up higher than its back. Unlike most warblers, this one isn't very shy and can be easily observed. That is if you can spot one in its habitat of choice that allows it to blend in quite well. Although not as flashy in color as most other warblers, the ovenbird does have a boldly spotted chest, bright white eye ring, and bold black and orange crown stripes. They may be difficult to spot, but their impressively loud, almost hypnotic ringing chant of teacher teacher is easily heard. Definitely a great bird for beginner birders if you have them in your location. Just listen for that distinct teacher teacher song. It's an odd but interesting warbler though. Its appearance and feeding strategies are very much like a different species, woodland thrushes, such as the hermit thrush. Like thrushes, it feeds on insects it finds in the leaf litter, which isn't typical of most warblers. They also live in the same habitats that thrushes do. There are two other warblers that look like a thrush though, and unlike the oven bird, they have thrush in their name, the Louisiana and Northern water thrush, which look virtually identical to one another. Although oven birds and woodland thrushes aren't genetically related, their habitat of choice and foraging strategies cause them to resemble each other as they adapt it to the same environment early on, something that researchers call convergent evolution. A couple of other odd things about them is that while most other warblers hop when they are on the ground, the oven bird walks. And usually warblers are pretty small birds, but the oven bird is larger than the average warbler measuring as much as 6 inches rather than the typical 4 or 5 inches of other warblers. As for its odd name, well that's a reference to the bird's nest, a domed structure with the entrance on the side like an old-fashioned oven. The song of these birds is interesting too, because the number of notes in each part of the phrase and how they are sung are highly variable from individual to individual. Our ears have trouble distinguishing all of the notes, but oven birds can hear the uniqueness in each other's songs. Often, neighboring male oven birds sing together too. One male starts singing and the second will join in immediately after. They pause and then sing one after the other again for up to 40 songs. 
The second joins in so quickly that they may sound from a distance as if only one bird is singing, but they rarely overlap the song of their neighbors. The oldest known oven bird was at least 11 years old when it was re-caught and re-released in Connecticut, the same state where it had been banded as a young bird. The next warbler is a real treat to see, but you'll have to visit marshy or boggy areas in order to catch a glimpse of one, the common yellow throat. Males wear a distinct black mask and have a bright yellow throat. Females lack a black mask. For the most part, these warblers prefer to stay hidden in the shrubs, but you'll likely spot one as it flits in and out of thickets. Listen for the male's loud and distinctive rolling wickety 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 song during the breeding season. It shouldn't be hard to hear one since they make these songs very frequently during summer, averaging as high as 125 songs per hour and sometimes reaching 300 songs per hour. Each male normally has only one mate in his territory during a breeding season. However, a female's mating calls often attract other males and she may mate with them behind her mate's back. Common yellow throats forage on or near the ground, eating insects and spiders from leaves, branches, or flowers in low vegetation. The oldest common yellow throat on record was at least 11 years, 6 months old. This easy to spot warbler spends its time in low shrubs and small trees. Males have a black mask and bold distinctive black streaking that extends downward from a black neck band creating a fancy necklace look. Females tend to be paler in color, don't have a very prominent mask if any at all, have thinner wing bars, and normally they lack the bold necklace that males wear. However, some females do have a darker necklace like a male. These warblers don't stay still for long, but due to their habit of hanging around low in short trees and shrubbery, magnolia warblers are pretty easy to observe. You can find these warblers foraging on the outer edges of branches consuming mainly caterpillars, especially spruce budworm when it is abundant. They consume other insects and spiders too. The male magnolia warbler sings a very short one second song, a whistled wetta wetta wetta, with the last notes generally being the loudest. The oldest recorded magnolia warbler was a male and at least 11 years, 11 months old when he was recaptured and re-released during banding operations in Ontario. He had been banded in the same area. Last, but certainly not least, is my favorite warbler, the yellow rumped warbler. The striking coloration of these warblers, as well as their tendency to sit on exposed branches, makes them an easy bird to observe. You can find these guys in mature coniferous and mixed coniferous deciduous woodlands. There are two distinct subspecies, the myrtle, this guy, the one I get in my location, a warbler of eastern U.S. and Canada's boreal forest, the other is Audubon's warbler of the mountainous west. The Audubon's has a yellow throat, whereas the myrtle subspecies throat is white. Male Audubon's warblers have more white in the wing than the myrtle, and female Audubon's have less distinctly marked faces, lacking the dark ear patches of the myrtle warbler. Males in both subspecies are more striking than the females. These guys flit through trees as they search for insects, but they'll also sometimes hop in the grass. Males sing a slow, soft, sweetly whistled warble or trill. The pitch is mostly even, but may rise or fall slightly, speeding up as it ends. Songs last one to three seconds and consist of up to 21 individual notes. They also make a sharp check call, which differs between the Myrtle and Audubon's races.
the oldest recorded yellow rumped warbler was at least seven years old. So there you have it, a few warblers to check out this breeding season. Which warbler or fact did you enjoy learning about the most? Comment below and let me know. And as always, thanks so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Take care. Happy birding. <laughs>